Hi, and welcome to the first episode of this Cisco video blog. Over the course of this video series, we'll be explaining the basics of room acoustics, sound and video conferencing, and how you can improve your working environment by improving the acoustics of your workspace. Here we are at Cisco's offices in Oslo, where we design our video conferencing systems. The sound in video meetings has a huge impact on your working day, whether you're in the office or working from home. Digital signal processing offers amazing possibilities such as noise reduction, de-reverberation and speech enhancement, but it can't fix the acoustic problems in the room that you're in, such as excessive background noise or reverberant sound. The acoustic conditions affect the speech signal both on the way from the speaking participant to the microphone as well as from the loudspeaker to the listening participant. The signal is processed after it is picked up by the microphone to enhance intelligibility and reduce noise, but results are better where the signal picked up by the microphone is better. On its way from the loudspeaker to the listener, however, the only way of improving the signal or ensuring it isn't degraded is to have good acoustic conditions. Welcome to our anechoic chamber. This room is constructed in such a way that all surfaces absorb sound. The large foam wedges that you see on the walls and ceiling are porous absorbers. They absorb acoustic energy. When I turn around and face away in this room, you might find it really hard to understand what I'm saying. And the reason for this is that in this room, there are no sound reflections coming back from the walls. We use this room to measure sound from a loudspeaker without measuring the reflections off the walls. Some people find it really strange to be in here. They find it uncomfortable or even claustrophobic. Now, just for reference, this is what this room would sound like if it were an empty concrete shell. That's what we call an oralization. Now, you might find it really hard to understand what I'm saying right now in this empty concrete shell. And that's exactly why we're telling you this. The acoustic conditions of your meeting space and your meeting partner's meeting space affect how well you understand each other. Now, a meeting room shouldn't sound like an anechoic chamber, nor should it sound like an empty concrete shell. Let's go and find some meeting rooms that are more similar to what you might find at your place of work. Here we are in a meeting room that hasn't been acoustically treated yet. We use meetings to communicate and collaborate. We like the spaces to feel open, modern and have natural light. Sometimes the materials used to achieve this do not make for the best acoustic conditions. In sparsely furnished rooms without acoustic absorption, the microphones receive high levels of reverberant sound, that is, sound reflections from the walls and ceiling. In longer meetings, this can be tiring and might even make it hard to understand what others are saying. Now, let's have a look and a listen at a better meeting room. Here we are in a better treated meeting room. The windows feature transparent panels that absorb sound and break up flutter echo whilst retaining the open aesthetic of the room. On the wall, we have porous absorbers that reduce reverberation and the carpet on the floor dampens the sound of footsteps. All in all, this makes for a great environment for local and video meetings. The microphones in this room pick up crystal clear sound and everyone can understand each other clearly. For more information on rooms, devices and acoustic and lighting guidelines, check out projectworkplace.cisco.com. In the next episode, we're going to look at loudspeakers, microphones and audio processing in video conferencing. See you there.